sir shall we begin yeah let me introduce okay okay so good afternoon everyone those who have joined for the day welcome to the webinar on career in accounting organized by research committee government college tripunagar let me introduce the resource person for the day c a joseph joy pudicheri who is also a faculty of commerce at bharat mata college trikakara he is a phd in commerce from mahatma gandhi university kottayam along with the professional qualification of chartered accountancy he is having teaching experience from 2014 at the department of commerce and a good friend of mine and readily agreed to handle this particular session for the benefit of the students and on behalf of our research committee german college reponitra and all the participants here i welcome you to this session over to you mm, thank you sir thank you very much uh, thank you for the inviting me to this session sir shall i uh, go directly to session we will fine. leave the discussions at the end of the session okay fine 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 okay Yes, the screen is visible. You can slide show. You use the slide show. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Just a moment. Uh, now the presentation is off uh, now it is coming yes coming okay Fine. now it is in full yes. screen right okay. yes yes so good afternoon everyone uh, myself joseph i am an assistant professor in bharat mata college trikakara department of commerce um i am also a professional uh, we will directly go to the session uh, before that uh, which language you prefer for uh, interaction is it our official mother tongue malayalam or english or mix of both i need inputs from the participants i feel a better better thoughts. mix i will better a mix i think okay okay fine fine, fine. okay let it be like that okay so uh, i have structured the entire presentation into five modules uh, in the first section i will deal with the big three profession it is ca cma and cs and uh, in second section i will detail about the institute and the coaching centers relating to it and the third section i will detail the career opportunities with respect to these three professions and in the fourth section i am uh i will little bit i'll touch upon uh, on global professional courses that is us cm and uh, acca that was requested by few of the participants and in the last section we will have some open discussions we will have some uh, doubts or anything like that uh, in the meantime if you want to ask any doubt at this slide you can interrupt me there is no issues in that okay is that fine is that okay you can unmute and answer no issues or you can put in chat box i can see that okay 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 fine okay okay so the big three the big three is uh, none other than this ca cm and c those tag lines are uh, market it is recognized by everyone why big i will tell you later at the end of the session you will feel yes it is big and these three are the only recognized professional accounting bodies in india yes there are many 
but why they are different means these three have their own statutes they are governed by their own rules and regulations they are professional they have bound by professional code of conduct and they have long tradition too institute of chartered accounts india formed in 1949 and this in 1960s and icsi in 1980s and it is long way they have gone so there are three stages or the structure of the course for these three are divided into three one is foundation the other one is intermediate and the other is final in the foundation session you need to have a basic understanding a basic level knowledge of whatever you are in the intermediate level you need to have a working level knowledge of the subjects you are learning at the final level you are expected to have expert level knowledge those are the knowledge levels that is expected out of each stage of this course while i move move on i will compare and contrast between these three professionals there are three stages in each of these professions whether it is ca cma or cs there are three stages for ca cma it is more or less similar they have a foundation they have an intermediate they have a final but when it comes to cs recently they have amended till last year they had foundation but this year onwards they have amended to include uh, an entrance test instead of foundation and their intermediate is called executive program their final level is called professional program okay so these three professionals have three stages stage 1 is foundation stage 2 is intermediate and stage 3 is final whereas in cs you have an entrance test and in stage 2 you have executive program in stage 3 you have professional program these are the number of papers you need to learn for entire courses across these professions it is more or less same at each stage for foundation it is 4 for intermediate it is 8 for final it is 8 for ca and cma but it is 9 for cs i will give you details in the meantime we'll see with respect to stage 1 with respect to stage 1 for ca cma and cs there are four subjects basically the subjects you will learn in your plus 2 in plus 1 and plus 2 your accounts your laws your mathematics and a little bit of communication and for ca and cma entire subjects is out of 100 totally for the foundation course it is out of 400 you need to have 50 percent to qualify that means if you score 200 out of 400 then you have qualified your foundation whereas in cs the total marks is 170 the percentage changes every every uh, chance the percentage changes and the me method of examination is also different for ca it is purely subjective it is completely written examination for CMA, it is a mix of objective and subjective. There are a little bit of MCQ and a little bit of return. Whereas in CS, it is completely objective. Like OMR base. You can just tick just like that. Okay. So the syllabus is based on your plus one and plus two commerce. But the level of questions and the depth of questions are asked is very much different from than your plus one or plus two that makes them professional okay this i will come back stage two stage three 
I'll come back to these slides later on. Okay. Who can register for this uh, professional courses? Any person who has qualified their 10th with at least 65% marks can qualify, uh, can register for the first stage. For foundation, you just need 10th pass. But if you want to write exam, if you want to, I repeat, if you want to write exam, then you should have passed your plus two and for applying for your examination, you should upload the plus two mark list. Sir, then why I should register in 10? You can prepare early. That is why. So, in my personal opinion, you register when you have completed your plus one. Okay, then study the entire thing. Then you register for the examination after your plus two marks has come. Register for your examination. Normally, the examination of foundation of CA happens in uh, May end. For CMA and CS, it is June or July. Now, the CS is planning to conduct their entrance examination four times in a year. They haven't fixed the date right now. They have bought that scheme only recently, one week past. Okay, so first stage is this. For registration, this is the eligibility. You need to have a 10th pass. And for registering for your examination, you should pass your plus two. And once you have completed stage one, you can progress to stage two. For registering for the stage two, either you need to complete the foundation of concerned profession. If you are going for CA intermediate, then you should have passed CA foundation. For CMA intermediate, CMA foundation, like that or yes sir i have lost time i have already joined for my degree no worries still you can do uh, your foundation or after completing your degree after completing your degree you can directly join to this stage two you can skip stage one okay so either foundation in concerned profession or a degree or a PG do that you will also do okay or if you want to join CA intermediate and you don't have any degree with you you have but completed CMA inter then you can join okay you have CMA inter with you then you can join CA intermediate. Mind you, only after completion of these three stages, you will get a degree award, a degree certificate. After completing each, each stage, you will get a certificate. Yes. For completing stage one, you will get a certificate other than your mark list. Okay. Other than your mark list, you will get a certificate that you have completed foundation you have completed intermediate you'll get a certificate like that but only after completing the entire thing you will get a degree certificate because ca is a degree cma is another degree cs is a degree these three are just stages okay don't confuse yourself then when we go to your final stage when we go to your final stage just when we go to this final stage, this C, you need to continue to after completing an intermediate and there's an IT training and IT training. I will detail about that later. So if you want to register for your finals, First, you should complete the intermediate and then IT training just for CMA also, just for CS also. For them, it is not IT training, it is management and skills, MS training. 
okay i will detail that later on all these things i will detail don't worry and with respect to practical training see any professional program requires practice you take doctors they have house surgeons right just like that we are also professionals we are professional so a professional requires practice for ca you need to have 3 years of practice under a practice in chartered accountant 3 years for cma also it is 3 years but for cs it is 2 years so these are the training with respect to accounting auditing or whatever matters you are doing along with that you need to have it training which i told you earlier while doing your intermediate you need to complete 15 days it training that is roughly 100 hours and there is an advanced it training while you are doing your finance for cma you need to complete 100 hours of it training for cs also you need to do it training but the duration is not specified maybe just like 100 hours and other training includes you need to have 15 days orientation while you are doing your intermediate and 15 days management and communication skills during your finals for cma you need to have 12 days orientation plus 3 days communication and 7 days iot training this entire training you need to complete at least after finals only then you can apply for a membership in cs you have 7 days induction during the first phase then 8 days edp plus 15 days ms of the management and skills during your uh, second and third stage and after completing your finals and before applying your membership to become a member you need to complete 25 hours of post training okay so these are the summary of training that is required to be completed during this course okay up to that are you with me any clarifications required you can put a chat box now guys any clarifications required so like how can we appear uh, just after sslc i didn't get that point okay you can register i will go back to that okay yeah you are mentioning here right yes sir you can register once you have completed your 10th you can register for the foundation once you have completed your 10th but you can write exam only after completing your plus 2 okay why there is a gap why because see during weekends you can go for training the respective institutes or any other coaching centers will offer you weekend training weekend coaching so if you start early you can you will know right okay if you start early you will get more knowledge that's all okay for writing exam again i am repeating for writing exam you should have completed plus 2 for registering for the foundation for registering for the foundation for attending that course like that you just need your 10th pass that's all okay on a personal note i will recommend register while you are doing your plus 2 okay okay yes that is better for you because most of the registrations have a validity of 4 or 3 years after that time you need to again re register that is why okay, okay 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 yeah thank Clear you now thank you okay anybody else any other doubts okay i think i will move on the fees which you see is your registration fees only this does not include any coaching fee okay these professional courses are 
self governed self paced self learning you have an option like that okay the institutes concerned institute will provide you send you study materials your post letters you can study comfortably sitting at your home just like what you're doing right now we have started that practice long before <laughs> the only difference is we have online we don't have any other thing but yes obviously you can go for additional coaching yes but that's up to you the study materials are sufficient provided you should have the patience and perseverance but it is better if you take an extra coaching that fees i cannot determine because from uh, from different coaching centers from different person it will differ so i cannot tell this is the amount no this is the statutory fees payable to the concerned uh, institutes for their registration which includes a fee of uh, which includes uh, course fee, course material fee also registration and course materials they will send you the entire study materials while i was learning the entire study material was in black and white now uh, they have turned that to color material so it is good for your eyes also okay so these are the registration fees comparatively our institute see institute charges you more than anybody else let it be okay so i am moving on to the uh, second phase of my session which is uh, the institutes the three institutes these professional bodies see like i said before the institute of chartered accountants of india established in 1949 uh, with a self governed act of the chartered accountants act similarly cma with the coast and works accountants act in 1959 and the company secretaries of india their institute with the company secretary sac 1980 and ca and the cs institute have their headquarters in new delhi whereas in cma it is in kolkata we have the uh, largest number of accounting professionals in india nearly 3 lakhs as on april 1 2019 the latest uh, uh, is not available to me uh and for cm it is 80000 plus it is for cs it is 55000 plus uh for the information institute of chartered accountants of india is the second largest professional accounting body all over the world in number and in branches okay few more details there are regional offices this administrative structure for you uh there are five regional offices for ca in cmdk and uh, kanpur in for uh, cma also they have four for cs also they have four we have the largest number of chapters these chapters are not only in india but outside also we have chapters outside india also 164 101 and 70 and uh, i have given you this details because uh, ernakulam is a hub of uh, most of education centers most of education centers these three have institutes in our ernakulam one is in divan road for ca uh, in uh, for cma it is near to kalur jaja avenue and for cs it is in chitu road okay uh, if you contact them they will get you all sort of details now you cannot go directly it is better to call for any other further details if you are required okay so this is the arnavalam chapter they will be happy to help and uh, this is the website of the concerned uh, uh, institute their original website you can browse it for further details regarding these courses uh, they will give you a plenty of resources even if you are not interested in joining the course no worries still you can browse these uh, websites for lot of free study materials i use these study materials to teach they are wonderful you can use this for your uh, degree or your pg any teachers in this session they can also use. it is freely available freely downloaded uh, pdfs only thing <laughs> if you are taking any pictures or anything like that you should give reference 
Okay, otherwise it is a copyright violation. So with respect to coaching and practice and uh, time required, see, uh, there are two types of coaching. Uh, one is oral coaching, the other one is postal coaching. I will tell you what is oral coaching and what is postal coaching. Uh, if you are, once you have registered for the uh, course, uh, you can attend uh, coaching classes in the concerned uh, institutes or in any other coaching centers. That's up to you. If you are attending it like that, it is called oral coach. Among these three professions only, CMA provides postal coaching. That means you do, don't need to go to their institute. They will give you study materials, but for writing every stage of examination, whether it is foundation or intermediate or final, you need to answer uh, an assignment for all the subjects you learn and send it as post to the concerned institute headquarters and get it valued. Only when your evaluation result is out and when you pass it, then only you can register for their examinations. That means you have foundation, you have four subjects, you will have four assignments. These four assignments you will write and send it to their headquarters. They will value it back and if you are passed in that, then only you can apply for foundation examination registration. Only CMA have that option. Earlier we used to have, CA also had, CS also had, but somewhere in 2009 or 8, they have stopped all these things. No postal. So I recommend don't go for that. You register at your institute, go for coaching there. At least you will get an input, right? It is better for you to, uh, to be taught by someone who knows these things. And or you have, you'll avoid all these extra unnecessary procedures. So go for oral coaching in concerned institutes. If you are not comfortable, you can take additional coaching. Normally, the classes are taken by qualified professionals who have experience in teaching over many years. Me myself have attended all the classes in Ernakulam. Ernakulam Institute only. And one or two subjects I have gone for tuition. In Ernakulam. I have never went out of Ernakulam for any other coaching. Now, uh, they have uh, many of the institutes are coming to Ernakulam and Kota and Trishur. Wherever you are, you have coaching centers. And uh, you will also have facility for online coaching. I don't know whether the institute offers it right now, but other institutes have pre recorded videos or live online classes at your request, but it is extra payment it is costly also okay mind you and what is the time required to be frank <laughs> this is a minimum time it is not like your degree it is not like your graduations okay this year i got into graduation 2020 2021 21 22 22 23 at the end of 2023 march 31st i will pass out you have three years fixed it is not the case with these professions. You will progress only after completing each stage. That is, if you have completed this foundation, then only you can progress to this stage. If you have failed one subject, if you have failed one subject, then you need to write the concerned group. I will tell you how and why. It is not like, yo, I failed for one subject. Uh, I can write it, write that subject only and get passed next time. No, it is not like that. The examination pattern is entirely different from your normal plus one, plus two or degree, which is a, which is your, which you are undergoing. No, it is not like that. It is entirely different. So this is a minimum time span for completing your course and your practical training. So roughly it may take a minimum of four years to end. It can take up to 10 or 15 or 20 years. 
it's all up to you okay so this is the minimum plan for your preparation registration writing examination and completing entire thing if you are doing it in the perfect way and i have told you about uh, a practical training right for these three professions you need to undergo practical training under a practicing professional for two years or three years whatever okay for ca and cma it is three years for cs it is two years but if you are extending your practice for more than two years then this is the amount you are getting see this is not your salary okay this is not your salary this is your stipend because you are a student you will get only stipend and this is the minimum amount they will give you minimum amount it in big four i hope you have heard about big four deloitte kpmg all those there they will give you maybe monthly 6000 or 10000 depending upon the uh, amount of work you do i say don't go for big four while you are doing this profession courses you will not get time you will not get time for learning so it is better you joined in a nearby practicing professional you can avail leave also whenever required but the maximum leave which you can avail during your practice this 3 3 years is 154 days it varies to profession to profession it varies to professional to professional some uh, principal will give you okay one month or two months some will give you three months some will give you six months like this so it is better you go for a nearby practicing professional and uh, uh, take your practice there is another advantage also you will be knowing all the things with related to your office work if you go to big four you will be knowing only specialized work they will alert you they will alert you only small things small works okay then with respect to career opportunities yes sky is your limit there is no limit for your professions but once you have qualified okay once you have completed all these three stages then you can apply for membership in concerned institute for ca if you complete all these three stages the first membership what you are getting is associate membership and you can put the designation ca in front and aca as a degree after 5 years of practice or employment whatever instead of aca you can turn that to fca for cma cost accountants now it is cost and management accountants acma is a degree or fcma is a degree cma is the prefix for cs acs is a degree or fcs is a degree cs is the designation okay so these three are with respect to uh, time only there is no much big, big difference if you are an employment the only difference is uh, you will be needing to pay extra amount of membership fee every year but if you are in practice it is better to become a fellow member at the earliest and what are your career opportunities see uh, these are a just a list just list if you are into practice the type of work you are doing is you cannot define that much type of work you will have to do you will have to do accounting you will have to do auditing you will have to do e return filing of income tax or gst or you will have to incorporate companies or you will go for certification of persons or valuation of assets or liquidation of companies or advisory management consultancy project management n number is your role. if you are in employment then big roles see once i qualified i got an offer from uh, south indian bank there is a direct recruitment okay you will get specialist traders in banks 
normally uh, when you write exam you will go for a clerk to cadre of your of your uh, if you are post graduate you can go for officer cadre but we are posted in specialist cadres or in directly branch managers that is a privilege we enjoy but more responsibility okay either uh, and if you are an employment uh, see um, you know bpcl most of you are familiar with bpcl uh the finance manager is uh, our senior member um do you know what is the amount of project m project fund he is handling last year when we were discussing it was 20000 crores project he is handling he is not alone but he is heading it as the cfo of that bpc he is a finance manager his name is c s oman l c s oman he is an expert in gst expert the best faculty we have got very noble and gentle so in employment also you have lot of opportunities in uh, practice also you have lot of opportunities sir how can i practice don't need it's just a procedure once you have qualified and acquired membership apply for a certificate of practice cop done you can practice as simple as that then if you are employed your salary package okay if you are a fresher you will get in india for ca it is 5 to 6 lakhs cm and cs or nearing to 4 to 5 lakhs or 4 to 6 lakhs if you are a fresher for ca it is 10 lakhs plus offer why it is not specified anything in cm and cs uh, even if uh, cm and cs are global professionals in recognized in uh, india most of the outside entities or governments do not recognize these two because they have their own accountants for that and why people recognize us because we are the most uh, you know tortured people in the world for 3 years of rigorous training there is no other course like that it is compulsory for writing the final exam it is compulsory you have to undergo those 3 years of rigorous punishment only then you can get membership only then you can write exams and if you are experienced 5 to 10 years of experience will double your salary if you are experienced in abroad your minimum salary is 20 lakhs and for your information if you pass everything in first attempt if you pass everything in first attempt there are campus placements average annual package offered to freshers is 20 lakhs plus for ca for cma it is 15 lakhs plus for cs it is 10 lakhs plus minimum it is average okay it can go up to 48 lakhs last year it was 48 lakhs i don't remember the name of that concern it is 48 lakhs for ca a fresher okay so that is the amount of money you can make if you want there is no limit then i will move on to uh, global institutions up to that are you with me if you have any doubts with respect to prior sections it, now you can ask any doubts any slide you can put in chat box no worries Five to six lakhs is minimum for freshers. Yes, there is an industry. When I qualified, uh, I got a job offer in uh, housing development corporation. Uh, starting was forty five thousand per month, but that job was offered in Coimbatore, so I was not interested. It was back in two thousand twelve. So now you can imagine how much it will be for freshers. Is that okay? 
Robin, is that okay? Any other doubts? I'll come back to the subjects and practical training once again. Shall I proceed? Okay, I think I, I think I can proceed with this. Okay, with respect to global institutes. Yes, there are many global institutes. Uh, but the two things you have requested is one is ACCA, uh, the institute incorporated in 1904. Uh, there are three stages, just like our profession, a foundation level, applied knowledge level, and applied skill exams. And there are many institutes that offers coaching for these courses also. But before detailing this thing, let me add you something. Doing this course is very much costly when compared to the previous three. It is not as easy or cheap that, like our professional courses. And this course is not recognized. These two, ACCA and USCMA or UKCMA, whatever we need. Both are not recognized by our government. Okay. For private employment, this is sufficient. There are many companies, uh, MNCs especially, working in, uh, they have offices in our info park and such. They will give employment to you. Or if you wish to go abroad and uh, get a job there, then this is the best qualification you can get. The best one. But mind you, it is very costly. And don't think this is an easy task. It is for an, uh, there are only three levels. There are only few number of exams per stage. No. Whatever subjects I am going to discuss for stage two and stage three, the same in international level you have to go. Okay. If we are learning in accounting standards for CA, CMA, and CS, there you have to learn IFRs. There is a difference. And with respect to management, with respect to project, with respect to anything, global standards you have to learn. There is difficulty. Okay. Then for US CMA, there are only two parts of examination, CMA part one and part two. I'll detail that. This uh, US CMA, that institute opened in 1919, long tradition. They are also not recognized by our government, but recognized by other private companies across the globe. They also have good salary packages that you don't need to worry. But again, I'm saying the amount of effort and the cost is comparatively very high compared to the other professions. I'll go back to the syllabus of these subjects. Yeah. See, for each profession, three stages. For foundation, it is four subjects each, eight subjects in stage two. And for final, for CA and CMA, it is eight papers. And for CS, it is nine papers. Basically, in your first stage, you will learn accounting. Whatever be the course you are taking, you will learn accounting. And there is a communication paper, a law paper, logical reasoning, mathematics, some economics. Okay, the, these are more or less the same across these four courses. One difference in CS is they don't offer accounting, but they have current affairs instead of that. Normally, the objective of these three, basically chartered accountants focus on accounting, auditing, and direct taxes. I say income tax. Those are their focus. Whereas management accountants focus on costing, management accounting, 
indirect access whereas the company secretaries focus on company law especially company law and all other laws the theoretical portion is more with respect to company secretaries compared to others the law part we have to learn a lot of law with respect to company secretary normally uh, those students who are doing llb prefer to do cs because there are many similarities in their uh, their syllabus they will learn that okay so this is the first part in stage 2 there are two groups for ca cma and cs suppose there are four subjects here actually they are not four subjects accounting is one subject company law is another subject other law is another subject cost and management accounting costing is one subject management accounting is another subject income tax is entirely different subject and indirect tax is entirely different subject actually you are learning <laughs> 1 plus 2 3 3 plus uh, 2 5 plus 2 7 subjects in this group if you really look into the syllabus don't worry i will share this ppt to you don't worry i will share this ppt and uh, uh, the concerned back um, materials which i have collected for you so that you can go on uh, reading and uh, get it okay the thing is suppose i wrote the exam but i failed in the subject only really. i failed in this subject what happens is in the next chance i will have to write all these papers not accounting only i will have to write all these papers sir what is the minimum marks for passing a subject the minimum marks for passing a subject is 40% that is if it is 100 it is 40 marks but for completing a group you need to score 50% marks that means aggregate you need to get 200 minimum sir what if i get 39 and 201 aggregate did you pass no you have failed for one subject you need to have a minimum of 40 and aggregate you need to have 50% okay is that point clear to you many students are confused with that part is that point clear to you okay yes, how about others how about others yes sir i hope it is clear to you so 40 marks in one subject and 50% for a group if you fail in any of the subject then you need to redo not only that subject but the entire group that's the way it is but we have a bonus here the bonus is suppose i score 61 marks in this paper i score 61 marks in this paper but i failed in accounting okay i got 35 in accounting and 61 in costing aggregate is more than 200 did i qualify the group no but when i write next exam i will get an exemption in this paper i don't need to write it again because i have scored more than 60 sir 60% is an easy thing i have got 99% in my 10 or plus 2 smile is my only answer to you. scoring 40 itself i don't know i have how i have got it i still wonder it is very difficult in the first stage yes no worries 
the pass percentage is roughly 56 to 70 percent when it comes to second stage it is 15 to 20 percent when it comes to final level it is 10 to 15 percent that means if 100 percent registering for a CA course or a CMA course or a CS course, one person is qualifying. That is a success rate. That is why till today we have only less than 3 lakh professionals. Got it? That is the way it is. Mind you, this is not an easy cut. If you are ready to work hard, if you are ready to work hard and work smart, then this is the course. Absolutely, this is your course. If you are ready to face challenges in your life, if you are ready to take risk in your life, if you want global exposure in your life, if sky is not your limit, beyond that is your limit, then this is the course you have to take up. Okay, and if you are looking for watch every time when you are studying, if you always want to game during your study, please don't come to this course. This is not your course. Okay, so these are the subjects in group one for stage two, that is intermediate for CA. In this is group two, you have advanced accounting, auditing, We'll have an ERP, we'll have FM and uh, economics, total 800. You can uh, write examination group wise, not subject wise. You can attempt one group in the first attempt, then next group in the next attempt. There is no issues. Or you can write all the eight subjects together. No, no issues. It's all up to you. That you can write. Then, this is with respect to CMA, more or less the subjects remain same, more or less. You have an accounting, you have a law paper, you have a tax paper, you have a costing paper, you have a management paper, uh, you have an FM paper, you have indirect tax paper, you have an audit paper. Same way in CS also, but here the law papers are given more importance in CS. There are many sections, many sub sub laws. Tax or further management, security laws, economics, financial management. In the final level, advanced level of question papers, advanced level of questions, analytical level. Don't expect what is, explain, how, where, define questions in these question papers. You, are, you will never get it. Never. What you are getting is you will give you will be given a scenario. Okay. It is subjective. Accordingly, you need to write. If you can substantiate your points and <laughs> if your examiner likes it, you will get marks. But fortunately, now they have introduced a little bit of multiple choice questions in final stage and intermediate stage for 40 marks in each of the paper or some papers it will be don't worry about it all these things i will provide in the material okay but mind you you may be thinking this uh, what you say in malayalam you say karaki kutu in that way you can pass no way because the answers to that multiple choice question will be at most confusing that's the way they will frame that question. It was better in everything in return mode. I used to write everything, but when it came to, you uh, know, uh, recently, last two, three years, they have changed the uh, uh, way of uh, conducting examinations. Okay, so this is with respect to CA finals, group one and group two. Now they have introduced elective papers. You can choose any of this subject, any one. Subject 5, subject 6, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, any one case you can. 
There is a direct tax, indirect tax. Then for CMA also like this. 4 plus 4, 8 pips. For CS, there are three groups. The latest amendment is this. There are three groups, module 1, module 2 and module 3. Independent pass. This 40% and 50% aggregate, that we will apply here also. Here, you have a plus point in CS. Two subjects are open book. You can take your study material for your exam hall, in your exam hall, and then you can refer it and uh, then learn. No worries in that. But mind you, do you think that exam will be easy? I don't think. That will be the heaviest exam you will face, open book set examination. The previous one, you will have some relaxation you will get, but this open book examination is very much difficult to write. It is better to write whatever you have learned and write. Looking it into and write, it is very difficult. That is my advice for you. Okay, so these are with respect to subjects. And one thing I have not included in these slides is examination. What was the examination pattern? The examination pattern is for first stage, except CS, it is everything written examination. For CA, they will conduct one exam one day. For CMA, they will conduct two exams one day. For CS, it is an entrance. So I think uh, all the exams are together one day, one whole day. That will be sufficient. They have not yet conducted that exam. They are yet to conduct in 2021 um, January or uh, January to March, March, somewhere, some date. They haven't fixed it. Only recently they have framed that entrance test. For uh, foundation, for, um, for not foundation, for intermediate, for intermediate, what they do is, uh, we have four subjects in first group and four subjects in second group. For CA, you will get one day gap between each exam, okay, for group one and group two. Same way for final also. But for CMA, what they're doing is, they will conduct group one in the morning and on the same day, group two in the afternoon. Okay, you will have one day gap between the exam, but in the morning session, you will have group one, in the afternoon, group two. That's the way they are. Okay, for CS also, it is like that. Okay, it is like that. Morning one exam, afternoon the other exam. And, This thing I have completed. This thing, no, no. Okay. Now it's the time for discussions. If you have any doubts, you can ask. I think the time is up to you. Mm, yes, somebody has posted a question. I have discontinued CA to join college as a faculty in 2005. Is it possible for me to complete CA now? I have qualified intermediate. Uh, sir, uh, you need to uh, re-register. The certificates are still valid, that you don't worry. The certificates are still valid, uh, that you can ask the respective institute. You can directly go them. Uh, the numbers are given in the PowerPoint slide. I will share this thing to Vinny, sir, so that he will send these uh, details to everyone. Uh, you can directly ask them. It is better to ask them because they it is a uh, lot of procedures will be there. You have to re-register because your registration will be cancelled. That's what I know. Uh, you do it will not be revoked. You can revive it again. That is what I know to my best knowledge. You don't worry about it. 
Venisar has many famous coaching institute called equivalency of CMA US or UK and ACCA to Indian CAA or CMA based on bilateral agreements of India with those countries. Is that a working logic or a selling trick? It is of course a selling trick. Don't fall prey. Never do that. They have, see we also have MOUs. See, uh, Institute of Chartered Accountants of India have uh, MOU with the uh, Institute of Chartered Accountants of England and Wales. If I want to be the member of ICAEW, there I need to write one examination. But the problem is the three years articleship that has to be uh, done under a firm recognized by both. Only then. I can do so. Otherwise, I will not to invest more one, uh, one, three years again for getting that membership. But if they are coming to India, if a chartered accountant of ICAWA has to come and practice in India, they need to write four examinations. That is the level of difficulty we have. Before going into any course sold by any of the coaching firms, you need to check the respective websites of uh, our institutes, CA, CMA or CS, whatever, they will have a section for MOUs. Please read it. If your institute has a memorandum of undertaking with that concerned institute, they will tell what are the details, for what purpose you have exemptions, what are the structure, what is the course, likewise they will say. Otherwise, don't go. Then CMA profession limited to manufacturing industry. No, madam, you can practice. But as compared to chartered accountant profession, uh, CMA and CS has a lot of restrictions. We can audit in most of the companies. We have tax audit, both direct taxes and indirect taxes. We have statutory audit of companies. We have statutory audit of banks. So the, num the scope of CA is largest in comparison to all the other professions. But if you are a practicing CMA, no worries. You, there is, uh, you can take up the tax audit of GST. There is no issue in that. You can take also statutory audits. You can take bank audits also, but there are some limitations that will be uh, detailed in the prospectus or in that website. Okay, any age limit. There is no upper age limit, but there is a lower age limit, 17 years for writing foundation examination. There is no upper age limit. There is one senior most member in our institute who joined for CA courses after his retirement and qualified. There is a person like that. I know he's in, uh, he has qualified in Ernogolo. That is why I, uh, one of my uh, teachers told me like that. That is why. How many times? The answer is N factorial. <laughs> Any number of times you can write. I will tell you my example. Okay. I started my professional uh, career in the year 2005 when I joined for uh, my degree course. At that time, it was uh, uh, CA uh, Foundation, CA Intermediate, and CA Final. Uh, for CA Foundation, it was one year. I could not write the exam uh, after completing plus two. It is not like that. You have to undergo one year after registration. That is the only way you have got. Then uh, during the first year, I completed the foundation. Then I took two attempts to complete my intermediate. So uh, I took a gap also. Uh, one attempt I skipped. So only after my final year, I completed the intermediate stage. Then in 2008, I joined for uh, three years articleship. Uh, and during that, you need to undergo an IT training, 100 hours IT training. Only then you can register for articles. That means that three years practice, uh, practical training under practicing CA. Then 
uh, during that tenure i wrote four times I mean you can start writing only after completing two years at that time now it is two and a half years after two and a half years you can start writing final examination i took four attempts nearly but uh, actually i i took only three attempts one attempt i couldn't uh, wrote write all the exams because i was uh, bedridden with, uh, with a fever so i could not write one exam so effectively i wrote only three attempts then i completed my uh, profession in um, professional examinations in 2012 and qualified so that is my story it not it need not be the case with everyone people can write within one attempt in one go there are many people like that see uh, there are exceptional students right i was not an exception i am an average student i am always an average i am still an average i am still a student i continue to learn there is lifelong learning so there is no limit for any attempt you can write any number of times no issues with that any other doubts yeah sure i'll share that powerpoint to uh, dr vinay sir and then he will share that thing to you along with that i will share the prospectus of uh, uh, these uh, three professions uh, i have a personal advice to any person any student who wish to join this profession uh, please take your studies seriously you need to spend regular hours of learn i will not say or i can't say how much of us because it all depends on your willingness and your smartness and your intelligence level it's all up to you let it be 15 minutes or let it be 1 hour or let it be 12 hours whatever but you need to spend time every day from start of the day and don't stop learning even after qualification i am still learning i know what is my limitations because every moment new knowledge is coming you need to have continuous professional education there are cp hours even post even after qualification you will have a lot of things to do the institute recommend you see you have to go undergo a minimum number of continued professional education hours that you need to have for me because i am a teacher i don't need to have it but if you are a normal employee then you should should have minimum cp hours for for all these three uh, professions okay any other doubts or shall i wind up here so this is my disclaimer uh, see i have tried every effort to limit my errors in this presentation because I even uh, some errors cannot be ruled out because i am a human being the logos used in the presentation are completely copyright protected by the respective institutions or organizations unauthorized copying or reproducing in any manner without prior permission will amount to violation of rules and will attract severe penalty because you are dealing with professional people and i will not advocate or recommend any profession to be superior or inferior to any other professions or i will not be responsible for any personal losses incurred after joining any of these courses mentioned it is all up to you it is all your decisions okay so thank you uh, uh very much i have one question joseph uh, is yes, there sir. any uh, the, post, the uh, we have heard of subject exemptions for post graduate students is there any such provision now for post graduate students in ca there is no exemption i will check out in cs and cm and i will let you know okay i have heard of that it, it was the in our times earlier i have heard mm -hmm. of my uh, friends claiming that in, uh, in ca there is no exemptions ah, in, in ca no. there is not in ca there is not in ca there is not in cm in and CA cs i will i will verify it and i will let you know so that you can also share with others Okay. sir i will share the entire material and uh, prospectus of all these three courses and some uh, additional materials to you so that you can send all these uh, materials to all the students sure, and sure. please let them know that don't uh, use this for publishing 
Yes. They are not supposed to do that. It is uh, whatever materials I have taken is everything is the copyrighted materials and uh, protected materials of concerned uh, respective institutes. And uh, I have asked the permission and then only I have received it. I, I have taken because I can take the material of ICI because I am a member. You are a member. But others, uh, but others you need to uh, properly ask and then you can use it for learning. There is no issues with that. Sure, sure. Of course, you can share also. But not you cannot sell it. That's it for money. <laughs> okay. So thank you, Joseph, sir, for your sharing your expertise on the topic, and uh, I hope all the participants are benefited and having cleared their queries. And those who are in the beginning stage of their career in accounting would have uh, learned a lot. And I believe that uh, we can go further in this kind of ventures and. Thank you all. Thank you, Joseph, sir, again, and thank you all the participants for your participation. Thanks to my, our principal and my research committee members for their support and cooperation. Thank you, one and all. Okay. Thank you, Vinay, sir, for giving me a wonderful opportunity to interact with a lot of students. Um, and uh, as a friend and as a guide, uh, you have helped me a lot in my professional growth. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Sir, if anyone has any